Okay, what's up everybody and welcome to my NXT review. This is a very big, heavy, jam-packed show for NXT tonight with a lot of matches being built up for TakeOver, Stand and Deliver in the next few weeks for both Night 1 and Night 2. And a lot of build has been going on tonight and a lot of big stipulations too. Really looking forward to this show. So there's a lot to talk about this tonight, okay? Uh, we do kick off the show though with Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. Versus Io Shirai and Zoe Stark in a tag team match to kick off the show. Obviously, we all know it's going to be Io versus um, Raquel Gonzalez on night one, which is main eventing uh, night one to stand and deliver for the NXT Women's Championship. So, um, at least we already know the main event to that right now. I'm sure everybody's talking about a different main event going on right now in the Mania, but I'm going to save my thoughts in the next day or two and uh, talk about that in a separate video, okay? Because I got some things to say about that. Since I've been seeing that debate go all along right now. But still, good match to kick off the show. Ended up with Gonzalez getting the uh, win onto uh, Zoe Stark with her finisher and whatnot. Right after uh, her and Io Shirai had a stare down then. Dakota, tried get, Dakota Kai tried to get involved, but um, Io took her out. Gonzalez ended up knocking her out the ring. And then doing her finisher on the announce table, which did not break, let's be honest. Um, Io Shirai ain't really that big, so... I don't think she would have been able to break the table anyway. So, um, yeah, the table didn't break there, okay? Um, so, yeah, Gonzalez, I don't know if Gonzalez needs to put more force into that or anything, but, um, yeah, it didn't break. But basically, just um, just a way to promote the match, though, and whatnot, doing this tag team match. So, yeah, we already know we got Eo and Gonzalez coming up. Uh, one thing I kind of thought funny right here, I know they had Adam Cole going to, like, um what was like a jujitsu, like Gracie's and whatnot. I guess where Kyle O'Reilly trains and Adam Cole ended up running in there until um well O'Reilly tackled him to the ground and a whole bunch of like guys had to break both of them apart. Why would you run into a Gracie's Brazilian jiu-jitsu gym when someone's already in their gear and no one they can kick your ass? I'm not saying Cole uh it, you know it's no slouch or anything, but it's like dude, he's in the what training and just like a whole bunch of MMA martial arts shit. And then he gets taken down by O'Reilly. I'm like, wait a minute. Why would you run up on him in a damn freaking martial arts gym? That didn't make a lot of sense. But I did like the segment, though. Um, I know Kyle O'Reilly and Cole get, came into the building separate ways with security. Which um, Roger Tron came in. Wanted to help Kyle O'Reilly kick Adam Cole's ass. But O'Reilly says, I appreciate the help. But this is between me and Cole. Strong just kind of looked on for a second, and then he says, you can, you and Cole can go to hell then. That's basically what both of you guys can do. Um, after that, next thing you know, they had L.A. Knight, or I should say Eli Drake. I hate that L.A. Knight name, but Eli Drake versus Bronson Reed, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, very surprised by the outcome of this match. Not bad or anything, but should... Eli Drake really be doing jobs after having one match in the company. Well, this is now the second match now he's had, but um, I'm surprised he lost already to Bronson Reed. Um, I'm sure it'll be a rematch from this. I like I, said, I didn't mind this match. I liked it, but you know, Reed went over clean after he knocked Eli Drake off the top rope and did the tsunami splash onto him. But um, why is he already doing jobs? Like, didn't he just get here? So. Don't get me wrong, he was in NXT a long, long time ago, but still, didn't he just get here and win one match? Now he's already losing, so don't know what's going on with that. That was kind of that was kind of strange to me. Like he lost already. Okay, it's kind of strange. Uh, but moving on from that was Cross versus Oni Lorcan. Now there is something to say about the tag team titles. Um, Unfortunately, Danny Birch end up, I believe he had a separate shoulder. Because if you remember last week when they had that tag match, Birch got hurt and he had to, you know, sit out the rest of the match then. So it was already announced that the tag team titles were vacated and at TakeOver, it now will be MSK Grizzle Young Vets, which I actually kind of called that happening, but they added Legato Del Fantasma also. And whoever wins will become the new tag team championships. How I would have done, I thought it was just going to be, okay, the Dusty Cup winners versus the runner-ups of the Dusty Cup winners, but they added Legato Del Fantasma for whatever reason. I don't know, okay? So, um, Birch, they say, is most likely going to be out for um, six months, okay? But his partner, only Lorcan, wanted payback against Cross. 
Uh, quick match, honestly. Of course, Cross got the win. Saito suplex into his big, you know, forearm to the back of the head for the win. Um, Cross got on the microphone in. Talked about what happened with Finn Balor last week. That, you know, Balor's action, you know, had malice behind it. And he was giving respect to a man who didn't deserve it. But, you know, Balor's neck in his hand is going to be feeling like everyone else's, okay? And he's going to choke the life out of him. But next thing you know, Finn Balor came out and he said, yes, you took your best shot last week, but the prince is still standing. But I know your weakness now. Because, uh, you know, when a man's young and, you know, flights with emotion, it's uncontrollable emotion. And they call it demons. But it's just emotions. But, um, you know, you have to control your emotions. That's what made him unstoppable. But Balor said, you know, Cross still fights with his emotions, which makes him sloppy and makes him vulnerable. And, you know, a lot of things could happen. There's two options. One, you surprise everybody and you can control your emotions and beat me at TakeOver. Or two, your emotion will end up mastering you, basically. Um, Balor basically said, he wanted to say that, you know, emotions take hold. All right? And they go deep into cold water. And he's going to drown crossing that water as you know both their logo showed up and um you know the takeover sign uh showed up then so not a bad promo from balor i did like that so really looking forward to this match which of course is the main event tonight too of nxt takeover but uh very good promo by um very good promo by balor out there very good Next, I know they had a promo with Kushida talking about Devlin tonight. Saying he's one of the best technical wrestlers in the world. We got a lot of people talking about they're the best technical wrestler in the world tonight on this show. Because uh, I know Regal announced the Gauntlet Eliminator Battle Royale to see who's going to be facing for the North American Championship uh, at TakeOver. Uh, next, Walter went against um, Rockstar Spud. I guess Spud was pissed at Imperium, wondering what happened to Killian Dane. And basically, Walter killed. Um, he basically killed Spud out here and, you know, put him in a freaking, what, Boston Crab or a Lion Tamer, which, you know, the ref stopped it. Champa came out then and talked about Walter. You intrigued me, he says. And, you know, everybody talks about you in that UK title right now. So how about standard delivery? You put up that title on the line, okay? And, you know, as Champa was about to walk off, Champa attacked Walter. But then next, you know, Rest of Imperium jumped them. And then uh, Walter ripped off, I guess, Champa's necklace or something. Was pissed off Champa even more until he got hit with a big chop then. So we'll see what happens with that. I think Thatcher may get involved. We, may, we saw Thatcher was not even uh, here tonight and whatnot. So with Champa going against Walter, that's going to be a war. That's almost going to be a bloodbath out there. If you think that match with him and Druganoff was insane, let's see what happens with him and Champa going to reign then. So... That match is going to be big, big for the UK title um, with Walter and Champa. So we'll see how that goes, okay? Could Thatcher get involved in this? Most likely. Uh, Robert Stone was in the back with Aaliyah trying to get Mercedes Martinez to join up back up with them to get those tag team titles. I guess they paid her in cash, but Mercedes says, you know, that's half. I want the rest of the money after the match, all right? Uh, Johnny Gargano was pissed in the back saying, you're telling me you're going to do this whole gauntlet battle royale thing and then I'm only going to have 24 hours to prepare for an opponent I don't even know. Regal basically said, I suggest you go study up on those opponents then. All right? So um, go do that. Uh, I know they showed who was going to the Hall of Fame um, uh, for WWE. I will say this real quick about um, the two Hall of Fame announcements between Kane and and the great Kali, Kane, Kane totally deserves it, okay, let me, um, say that right now, I have watched Kane ever since I started watching wrestling back in the Attitude Era, and basically he has mostly seen his entire career in this company, now, I may have wasn't around during Isaac Yankum, but you can say a lot about Kane, from his mask Kane, to not having masks, to his feuds against The Undertaker, from going against, you know, people like Big Show, just, I could go on from a list of accomplishments. I think it's kind of odd that he was announced the same day with the great Kali. Even my friend had a problem with this. You think they would save Kane? I, I didn't even think Kane was even going to go in this year. I know Undertaker had said it today on the bump and whatnot. But um, Kane would be 
almost a headliner when you think about it. I wouldn't just put him along with any class and whatnot. Let's see somewhat the headliner because he's a very big name and a bigger star than the Great Khali. I'm actually surprised they're even putting the Great Khali in there in general, okay? I didn't really think about that. I just think it's kind of odd that he's announced the same day as Kane, though, but... Kane, Glenn Jacobs, you could say a lot about him. From I can go all the way from the Royal Rumble in 2001, just from being having the most eliminations, just from being a world champion, uh, just multiple tag team champion. I can go from many tag teams, from Kane and RVD to Kane and the Hurricane, the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and the Big Show, um, Kane and Hur Hurricane. Remember Hurricane? I could talk about that too. So I can say just... Mass Kane, Ball Kane, Demon Kane, um, Kane just murdering sucker suckers everywhere back in what oh two three you know during that time when he was a real giant monster then so um I I could go uh, Kane and X Pac I can't forget about Kane and X Pac what am I talking about I cannot forget about that tag team too so Kane is just deserves all of it the man's done everything in this company damn near okay everything so i'm just surprised they kind of said i'm randomly with um great Khalido. that was my only thing about it he's one of those guys you just save as um as a headliner i didn't even think he would be going in now i probably would have said they would have waited a maybe a couple years maybe or two or whatnot given that they keep bringing kane back anyways and wasn't he just in the royal rumble like two months ago so he's not really retired he's kind of semi-retired so kane is still around all right um, like I said, I have watched him since the freaking damn near beginning in the Attitude Era, and I could just name multiple, 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 multiple Kane mu uh, moments. I still like the Slow Chemical song, too, so, um, that's always something, you know, uh, fun to talk about. So I just wanted to say something about the Hall of Fame real quick, given that, uh, you know, I heard Kane and, um, the great Kali were going in today, but Kane... You know, just big star. I would have saved that one and put him on a higher level when you're putting him in the Hall of Fame, okay? Just many things to talk about when it comes to him. But also, uh, Cameron Grimes was talking to Roger Strong in locker room, talking about the Undisputed Era, which I actually thought was kind of funny and whatnot, talk about them, um, the Undisputed Era. <laughs> Uh, you know, we can form our own group and everything. And then Roderick Strong said, just punched him. And Grimes saying, that's not how you do business. Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart went against Aaliyah and Mercedes Martinez for the tag titles. Of course, Aaliyah ended up taking the fall anyways from the Eclipse. I, come on, Martinez was not going to get pinned here anyway. It's kind of random that she was just in his tag team title match. though. So I didn't know where they were going with Martinez next after she, you know, lost back at the last takeover and, every, and everything. So, um... Didn't really expect to see what was going to happen right here. But just another showcase win for Moon and Blackheart. Which, of course, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell looking at those tag titles. Then we'll see what happens with that. Um, Jordan Devlin went against Kushida. Good match. I would say I would be surprised to see Kushida take the pin here. Given that he was getting somewhat of a push lately. But, um, of course, Santos Escobar and crew come out then. They did get involved. Which, you know, Kushida, you know... Devlin threw Kushida into them, but then Devlin used Kushida just to roll him up with the jackknife. Kushida ended up going back after uh, the rest of Legado del Fantasma as Santos and Devlin had a stare down. But then next thing you know, Shawn Michaels' music hits HBK. He comes out there. He didn't say anything. Uh, he just took a ladder from under the ring, threw it in there, and I guess we're going to have a ladder match for both of those Cruiserweight titles to see who's the undisputed Cruiserweight champion. Basically, we're getting WrestleMania 10 vibes with Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon for both of those Intercontinental Championships at the time, okay? So that's what Shawn Michaels had in plan, and even had a stare down with Adam Cole then in the back before Cole and O'Reilly could do their segment too. So Shawn Michaels just uh, just making a surprise appearance, surprise appearance here without saying anything and uh, throwing a ladder in the ring and staring at Cole, okay? But in the end, we got Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, which William Regal told him to sign a contract saying that NXT is not responsible for what you two do to each other. So basically, it's an unsanctioned match, and you guys will be the co-main event of night two of TakeOver, okay? Adam Cole basically said, I had a revelation, he said, that, you know, I don't need Undisputed Era anymore, okay? And, uh, you know, Undisputed Era was holding him back, and Kyle O'Reilly showed him that, and, you know... It's, you know, I almost bought into this whole BS about brotherhood and everything and friendship. 
It only meant one thing that, you know, it's only about just being at the top. And that he had to watch Kyle O'Reilly fail twice to go after the NXT title. Then you tried to defend Balor and bring him in the whole Undisputed Era. And that, you know, uh, you're just happy being a lap dog. And that's it. And Cole basically said, you know, I'm not one to sit on the sidelines. And now O'Reilly lost sight about what this was all about. Okay? Because uh, you wouldn't even be in WWE right now if it wasn't for me. And Cole basically said, I'm the one who's main evented. I've led the charge. I've sold the merchandise. O'Reilly has done nothing. Okay? And uh, he will win at stand and deliver. And uh, basically, you're just going to be a lap dog sitting in. O'Reilly had got the contract in and basically talked about Cole. And, you know, uh, we were all like pit bulls and everything that came into this company. And, you know, we had a lot of heat with management and Regal and all the wrestlers in the back. But, uh, you know, ever since Undisputed Era came in, we became better fighters, champions, stars, wrestlers and whatnot. But Cole's still the same asshole who stepped in a few years ago. And, you know, you know, you guys were cool at one point. But O'Reilly said, you know, I sold my soul to the Undisputed Era. But now I'm going to take it back. All right. And, um, you know, basically said that Cole is just a conceited prick who uses his friends just to get ahead. And, um, you know, he wasn't surprised when I'm going to beat you up. And, you know, for the first time, first time in four years, I'm going to sleep like, like a baby, he says. And he signed the contract, which Cole said, that's right, O'Reilly, sign your death warrant. And then O'Reilly signed it. He threw the pin at him. And then both guys tried to charge at each other as security held both of them back. So um, that was a great segment. Great mic work from both Cole and O'Reilly. So looking forward to this unsanctioned match and both guys just barking at each other, getting ready getting ready to kill each other out there. So that was good. I enjoyed that. Uh like I said, takeover is stacked, all right. Night two may look a little bit more stacked though, just from this unsanctioned match from Balor versus Cross to this whole um ladder match, I believe. I think that's on night two for the Cruiserweight Championship. Um Whoever's going to be going for the North American Championship. So, both of these TakeOver cards are um, very stacked right now coming into Stand and Deliver. I'm really looking forward to it, okay? So, there was a lot to say about this show. From the ending segment, just matches being set up, Shawn Michaels showing up. Just a lot to say about leading into TakeOver. So, very heavy show tonight on NXT. A lot of big newsworthy stuff going on. And a lot of matches being set up for TakeOver, as I said before, Okay? But other than that, though, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about uh, TakeOver or just TakeOver coming up or NXT in general tonight. What do you think about the show? Did you like it? Did you hate it? And, um, yeah, that's all I really got to say from this, all right? So other than that, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, at HoodedKnight890. I'm out of here. See you guys later. Peace.